I'm James Whitmore. The cities of America are under attack. Crime is on the increase, in some instances overwhelming the capacity of law enforcement agencies. While sociologists and politicians ponder the causes, one group of victims fights back. This is the story of a neighborhood under attack, a story of survival. <laughs> section of Brooklyn, New York City. This is a crime-menaced neighborhood, and for the moment, this girl waits frightened and alone. But there is something Crown Heights residents can do to allay their fears. She has summoned a citizen safety patrol group, a specially assigned escort, to see her safely home. These men will not leave her side until she is secure behind the locked doors of her own apartment. go to a PTA meeting, we know that we will be escorted home after the meeting. I know my friends and I feel much safer when we walk the streets at night. We know that if we do come home at a halfway unreasonable hour, we can always call on them to walk us into the building and upstairs. Well, I feel it's a wonderful thing. We all feel very When the swelling crime wave of New York engulfed his community, Rabbi Samuel Schrager decided on a course of action that has aroused strong feelings of support and of antagonism. He organized the young men under his influence into volunteer patrols to protect their neighborhood. They are called the Maccabees, after Hebrew heroes of ancient times who defended their land from invaders. The community Rabbi Schrager is acting to defend is predominantly Jewish, but by no means uniform. It has many diverse national and religious factions including those Jews who fled persecution elsewhere. The refugee finds here a tolerant community, stores that cater to his special needs using Yiddish, a kind of international second language, to keep open the doors of communication. The tradition of tolerance has extended to another kind of refugee, the Negro, escaping from the poverty and hopelessness of the bordering Negro ghetto. Negroes make up 20% of Crown Heights population and live amicably with their white neighbors in what is normally an uneventful middle-class community. Suddenly, this peaceful relationship is severely put to test. Charlotte Lipsick, age 38, is robbed, raped, and left to die 
in the elevator of her apartment building. We had something to eat. We were coming home, and I heard somebody say that there was a girl in uh, the theater. She's bleeding. I went to see, and the first thing that came to my mind was to get some cold water and put it on her forehead to bring her to because she looked like she was uh, in shock, and her eyes were closed. She couldn't talk. I couldn't hear what she said. The detective said I should put my head down to her face to see if I could listen to what she said. I couldn't hear. She just moved her lips, but no voice. Charlotte Lipsick, school teacher, met her death returning from an evening at the movie. Charlotte Lipsick, alone in the streets of Crown Heights at night, could have called on the Maccabee patrols to see her home. She did not, and she is dead. Instead of the police devoting their time and giving out tickets to the poor people around here, they should devote their time more to prevent crime around here. Absolutely. We must maintain the confidence of the people in the police department. One way to do that is to make sure they see you so that they know there are people on patrol, there is protection around. Just riding by is not enough. You have to look people in the eye. Your presence has to register. The man who is described as the perpetrator of the assault rape, a male Negro, 5 foot 10 inches, 155 pounds, 21 years, light complexion, head shaved. Seen from the outside, homes in Crown Heights are much like jails. But the bars on these windows are to keep people out. Rabbi Samuel Schrager begins his day with a traditional ritual. He prays in a shawl, the headdress of biblical time. Samuel Schrager follows another ancient tradition, accepting his responsibility as rabbi to lead his people in the times of their trial and suffering. For this young husband and father, concerned with the safety of his family, the problems besetting his community are immediate and personal. The Schragers live on Montgomery Street. So did Charlotte Lipsick. Continue on the Discovery Channel. A feeling of helplessness grips Crown Heights. Confidence in police protection is severely shaken. Only the Maccabee patrols offer some hope. Rabbi Schrager decides to extend the range of their effectiveness. He appeals for more volunteers, additional automobiles, technical assistance. He speaks to working men and to merchants. At a mass meeting, he reassures an entire distraught community and shows it a way to fight back. Are we to sit back, relax, 
and wait for it to go away? The predominantly Jewish membership of the patrols soon changes as non-Jews, both white and Negro, offer their services. So I figured uh, I would come down and volunteer my services on Friday night when they're short. Why well, I came down here? Because I'm sick and tired of hearing about the public apathy. And uh, I also have a family, and I like for my family to be protected as well. are now scheduled so that any given point in Crown Heights is under surveillance every two minutes. Four to six unarmed men ride in each patrolling car. If they observe criminal activity, they are to summon police. Only when absolutely necessary are they to intervene physically. I think it's a wonderful thing that people are giving up some of their free time this way. And I think it's doing nothing but good. I don't see any harm in it. The, the patrol was set up in order to have people be able to go out in the evening and feel that they can be walked home without being frightened. And they can walk the streets without being frightened. We have contemplated the possible organizing of a similar group in Bedford Stuyvesant. I think it's a wonderful idea providing if it's doing any good. I think the whole neighborhood should use it, the whole borough of Brooklyn should use it. I, I, I'm not too sure, because without, without the right protection of the law, uh, that the, the citizens are paying for each and every day. If one voice in 10 urges caution, it is not without reason. It shows awareness to an evil possibility, a danger in the Maccabee patrols greater than the crime they seek to curtail. There are people that know more about this than I do. If they think it's the answer, maybe it'll work. But uh, I don't see how you can just grab a lot of people and say you're going to patrol areas. Because after a while, it'll get to the place where the white people will say, well, you can't come into my neighborhood. And the Negroes will say, well, you can't come to my neighborhood. So you're going to still have race riots. It's still going to breed more trouble, more discontent. Rabbi Schrager is an administrator and teacher at this parochial school called a yeshiva. In the pattern of changing neighborhoods, the yeshiva stands now inside an all-Negro community, Bedford Stuyvesant. The faculty and students are members of a small sect of Jews known for the fervor of their religious beliefs, their strict customs, and in many cases, their old-fashioned dress. Secular instruction is given in English, religious instruction in Yiddish. Conspicuously different and more concerned with piety than pugilism, the students here are often easy marks for those seeking scapegoats for their hatred. These students and myself are members uh, of the Hasidic movement, which is part uh, of Orthodox Jewry. We are, of course, uh, a minority within a minority. The Hasidic philosophy emphasizes prayer, warmth, scholarship, spiritual values, uh, and above all, love and peace. The Hasid wants to be left alone to pursue his spiritual endeavors. We are a happy people. We sing even uh, when we are worried. Our concern for the values of prayer, scholarship, a peaceful life is so overwhelming that we rarely give thought to the questions of having to defend ourselves in a physical sense. Nevertheless, there is a time when we must stand for our rights 
and protect our families from the oppressors. As Jews, we know very well what an oppressor can do. In Europe, we experienced the painful persecutions of the Bolsheviks and the Nazis. During those dark periods in history, many of our young men went underground to fight the enemy back, and they did a good job. They were called Zelbschutz, which means self-protection. In America, we are not protecting ourselves from, from the government or, or the general population as we had to do in Europe, but rather from individuals which do not have the respect of the government and the population. We are defending ourselves against criminals. in the middle of Bedford-Stuyvesant. This is the famous area of Brooklyn where more than 300,000 Negroes live and uh, I dare say is the largest Negro city in America. Now, there's been a lot of talk recently about crime here. I've become concerned about groups which are forming up to take the place or to supplement the work of the police department. People who are talking about creating these private patrols are really talking about taking over some police function. It's obvious that somebody must pay the expenses of such groups. It's obvious that somebody has to provide the direction and the leadership. Now, who's going to control individuals in these groups, some of whom may not have all their senses, who may not be responsible, who may want to fight, who may want to uh, pursue someone? Who's going to control them? Who's going to be responsible? Who's going to avoid the body contact which leads to all kinds of confusion? Even with the police department, you see, we have individuals who creep in and who may not uh, be balanced, and there's trouble between the police and the people. I'm afraid of any group, <clears throat> whether they're Negroes in it or not, which is not controlled for all of the people, by all of the people. We have been dubbed the vigilantes. Of course, we are not vigilantes. I abhor the word vigilante. We are safety patrollers. We patrol the streets, spotting crime. We carry no arms. We carry no lethal machinery. All we do is drive through the streets with our cars and our two-way radios. And if we see any problems developing, we call upon the police. Of course we'll cooperate. Where they make reports to us, we'll accept them. We'll act on them. Will, will we be guided by their opinions? Where these opinions are well-based and represent the felt needs of the community, of course we'll be guided by them. But there is no substitute. If this is to remain a nation of laws, there is no substitute for effective police enforcement by people properly trained, professional people. I wouldn't want an amateur to cut out my appendix, and I wouldn't want an amateur to enforce law in Crown Heights. Spurred to action by community feeling and the example of the Maccabees, police of the 71st Precinct cull additional forces from the rest of the city. Effective 8 a.m. Thursday, that's tomorrow, continuing until further orders, one squad of patrolmen assigned to patrol precincts will perform an extra tour of duty each day. The extra duty will be a 6 p.m. to 2 a.m by the squad that has completed its last quarter 12 tour on the preceding day. This will begin at 6 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday. Furthermore, ride slow. Make sure you have it in mind.
If in Crown Heights the fight appears successful, in neighboring Bedford-Stuyvesant, the crime rate continues high. Most frequent victims are the law-abiding citizens of the section. And there's no safety anymore? I'm afraid when I'm walking at night. Well, I don't think we have enough protection because I am afraid myself. I wish here at the church, and therefore, even going from church home, I am afraid. Most crime arises because people are trying to get something for nothing. It's not crime of violence attacking someone usually. They're trying to steal because they haven't got any money, and that's the problem of my community. People haven't got jobs. If you give people here jobs, if you give them opportunities, you'll cut your crime by 90%. I think there is the root cause of the problems we face in Bedford Stuyvesant. In Crown Heights, the Maccabees, functioning with restraint, have the gratitude of the people and have won the respect and cooperation of the police. But I'm very gratified the reports we are getting now at St. Peter's Falls. There seems to be a tremendous decrease in crime. And uh, we, we feel that the situation is very much under control now. And we are very happy about it. I think that uh, we want to give well, I think both of us. And let me say this. I have asked my men to report to me any time they have any contact with you people, good, bad, or indifferent. The stories I get back are only the best. They come upon scenes, your men don't interfere, your men don't take over, they observe, they have been helpful, they've called us. Well, we have no problem, no quarrel with you at all, Rabbi. Fine, and on the, on the other hand, we find that uh, we feel like a part of the police department, really, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe we ought to talk about uniforms. <laughs> Many people have inquired as to whether I believe that safety patrols should be initiated in other areas which are experiencing uh, a rise in crime. A safety patrol may be good, and then again, a safety patrol may be very bad. Ours is a very close-knit community. And as a rabbi, I am able to prevent any possible vigilantism on the part of uh, the volunteers. The situation in other areas will have to be judged by responsible people in those areas. I could not make any positive suggestion one way or the other. In Crown Heights, the people are no longer afraid to walk the streets at night. Once again, they feel secure in their home. This is a direct result of Rabbi Schrager and his Maccabees. Their policy of Zelbschutz, self-help. For Crown Heights, the Maccabees were an answer. An answer to the question of survival. <laughs>